Hi, my name is Shannon. I run an organization called Stack of Stones and welcome to our video about how to calm your ass down in about 13 seconds. Let's get started. So as we dive in, one of the first things I want to do is tell you a little bit about what we do overall so then you understand how this video fits into our big picture. So at Stack of Stones, we're all about supporting and encouraging guardians. And our definition of a guardian is anyone whose job is to support someone who's in a level of distress. So this could be anyone from a first responder to a medical professional, some legal professionals, anyone who works in social services. This is a huge range of roles. But we wrap them under this umbrella of guardian, first because we think guardians are, are the absolute core of a really strong community. The work you do is incredibly important to the community around you. Secondly, these jobs have some really specific challenges. They can be really hard and overwhelming and wear you down over time. So our goal here is to support you and encourage you as much as possible. In this tool in particular, what we want to talk about is a way to calm down in those moments where you kind of freak out. So all guardian roles have some sort of overwhelming point. This could be something like if you're a social worker, you go in to advocate for some foster kiddos on your caseload and the judge is awful. Um, you may have a moment of getting overwhelmed, overwhelmed and freaking out, or maybe you're a first responder rolling up on a really awful multiple vehicle accident where there's a bunch of kids involved, right? Your patient codes, there's all these different things where we just have a moment where we kind of lose it. That is completely normal and okay, and you have a job to do. So what we want to do today is talk about how to calm down in that moment. Specifically, we're going to talk about three things. So first, we want to talk about how our brains work and what's actually going on in that situation. Secondly, we're going to talk about the method for calming down. And then third, we're going to talk about how specifically to apply that method to your job, because all guardians have a slightly different set of responsibilities in an environment. First, let's talk about our brain. And this is going to be super oversimplified, because in this moment when we're freaking out, we need simple. And so props for this method back to a guy named Dr. Dan Siegel. And this is how he explains our brains. Over the top, the top part of our brain is called our frontal lobe, and this is responsible for all of our executive function. So when we need to do a spreadsheet or be creative or come up with a logical argument, ask a good question, right, dose out medication, all these different things we have to do, those come from our frontal lobe, our executive function. Underneath of that is our amygdala, or our survival brain. So this is the part of our brain that's responsible for fight or flight. When we're in a moment where we need to survive, our amygdala takes over and takes control. Let me explain this another way. So imagine you are out taking a hike in the woods. It's a beautiful sunny day. You're relaxed. You're having a great time. Your brain is functioning perfectly and your frontal lobe is in control of that moment. If you needed to do some math, you could do so because your frontal lobe is running the show. But then imagine out of nowhere comes a bear. Your lid flips because your amygdala is then in control. This is not spreadsheet time. This is survival time, which means that our amygdala is running the show as it should. Okay, so in this moment where you need to survive, your lid flips. All kinds of different things happen in our body at this point, right? So we're flooded with stress hormones like adrenaline. Our circulation shifts, our respiration shifts, we might get sweaty, we might get shaky. There's all these different things that happen because our body in that moment is focused on survival, as it should be. Okay, so in the moments when your lid flips at work, one of the things I want you to remember is that's okay. This is the way your body is designed to work. And we're gonna work on getting it back down so that you can do the job you need to do. So before we dive into the method, one thing I want you to do is think about how do you know when your lid is flipped? What are your, gonna be your personal signals that help you recognize we need to calm back down? Um, an example for me is I my voice gets really shaky. So in those moments where I'm really either freaked out or mad or something has happened that has flipped my lid, I can tell because my voice starts to shake you're gonna have some different signals, or you may have the same ones, but we're all a little bit different. Some of us get really aggressive, right? So that fight part of fight or flight, some of us freeze, panic, kind of shut down. Maybe we get clammy. There's all kinds of different things that happen. Take a moment to figure out what your signals are. Then let's move on to the method. So this is actually a really simple. Method is probably a more complicated word than, than I need, but you know, it's what we got. Um, and what we're going to talk about is how to go from this back down into this place of, of executive function in about 13 seconds, okay? And if one of the thoughts you have is, look, lady, if you think I have 13 seconds to calm down, you're crazy, I get that. A lot of guardian jobs, you have to respond immediately to what is literally a life or death situation. I get that. We'll talk about that, but work through this with me for a second, okay? 
So here's what we're going to do. Your lid is up. You you know your signal, so you recognize your lid is up. We're going to calm down using two specific things. The first is breathing. So just like our body is working well when our lid flips, it is also designed to start calming down when we take deep breaths. So the first thing I want you to do when your lid flips is take two deep breaths. And a deep breath to me is three seconds in, pause, and three seconds out. Okay? And you do that twice. I'm not going to do it on the video because I tried to record this and it's super awkward and nobody wants to watch that. So we'll move on. Okay, first up, two deep breaths, three seconds in, pause, three seconds out. Then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on our sense of touch. And I this sounds a little bit weird for me to say to start with, but let me explain. So traditional grounding, if you've heard about grounding, is this idea of calming ourselves down using our five senses. However, if you're a guardian, you may not want to use all five of your senses, okay? So let's work through this for a second. Taste. If you're in a situation that is overwhelming, let's not involve taste. Same with sights, sounds, smells. Those may not be pleasant and may not be something we want to focus on, which leaves us with our fifth sense, which is touch. And so we're going to use touch because it's something within our control. And what grounding does is we're going to take 13 seconds to focus on the way something feels. Because in this moment that has freaked us out, it's completely overwhelming, we need to focus on something really specific to start that process of calming our brain back down. So specifically, what I want you to do is I want you to think about your, your daily uniform or your daily environment. What is something that will be around you in a situation where your lid flips? So this may be something on your uniform, like a badge or a, um, one of the little name tags, something like that. It may be, um, for a lot of guardians, maybe you have rubber gloves. So a lot of guardians have to have rubber gloves, and those have a very specific tactile feel to them. There's all kinds of different things. Maybe it's a vehicle. So if you're always in a vehicle, the steering wheel is actually a really great tactile object. So figure out something that will always be around you. And then what I want you to do is take 13 seconds to think about what it feels like. So my tactile object is this watch. One of my roles is as a therapist, and sometimes my lid will flip in session. Or I also do a lot of training and speaking, and my lid can flip when I'm on stage. I have this watch with me for keeping track of time, but it's also made out of a really smooth, specific wood. And so in those moments when I need to calm myself down, I actually use this watch as my object. So I want you to figure out your tactile object, and then figure out what it would be like to just focus on what it feels like for 13 seconds. I know this is a little strange, but again, it's this idea of drowning out the noise or whatever it is that is panicking you and getting your brain back down. Um, let's talk about specifically how this works within your, your role. And again, going back to this idea of you may not have a full 13 seconds to calm down. So I chose 13 seconds because that's about the time it takes to do two deep breaths. I get that. So what we want to do is we both want to practice doing this so that we're good at it and then adjust it as needed. So what I want you to do is this is just like any skill that you use at work. You don't practice it in the crazy moment. You practice it in the calm moments. So, you know, whenever you have a moment, practice taking two deep breaths and focusing on your tactile object. Then I want you to start focusing on the, or I want you to start noticing the times when your lid flips a little bit, okay? So it's not like lid flip is all or nothing. Sometimes we're just kind of halfway, right? Maybe we're really angry or frustrated or anxious. And so we kind of start to feel a little bit of this, this loss of control. Um, if you're a parent, our kids can do this to us, right? My kids can flip my lid in an instant. Traffic can do this to us. Costco on a Saturday morning. There's all these things where we can start to get really frustrated or overwhelmed. Start practicing in those moments. When you get good at this, it's not super noticeable. So I mentioned that I can do this in a session with a client, right? So if I'm sitting with a client and my lid flips, maybe they're really upset and I want to make sure I say the right thing and I kind of get a little panicky, panicky about making sure I, I use the right words. I need to calm myself down, but I don't want them to know I need to calm myself down. So I can I can mess with my watch and take two deep breaths without it being super obvious. The more you practice, the less obvious it'll be that you're doing it as well. Then I also want you to think about what it looks like to alter this. Adjust it to your particular situation. So if you're a 911 dispatcher, you can't take 13 seconds in between questions. That's not going to help. But maybe you can take one. Maybe you can take one deep breath, so five or six seconds. So alter it to your situation. And part of that may be figuring out your cover. Um, and this may be something that you're doing, right? So you're actively doing something, but you're actually using that as a cover for taking a couple of deep breaths and calming down. 
An example of this would be, uh, let's say you're a firefighter, you roll up to the scene in the engine and you jump out and you have to go get your tools. That, that walk back to whether they're on the back or the side of the engine, that walk can be a time where you take a couple of deep breaths and focus on your tactile object. You're active, you're going to get your equipment, but you're also taking that as some time to calm. Okay, so this is, these are some different ways to integrate them into your situations that hopefully will help you kind of regain control. Let's wrap up and review. Really simple. Your lid is going to flip in some situations at work. That's totally normal. And in order to do your job, you have to learn to, to pull it back down. So what I want you to do is practice this method of taking two deep breaths, focusing on your sense of touch in, in order to focus your brain back down and begin that process of calming. That's it. It's pretty straightforward. It takes a little practice, but I hope that it helps you in those moments that are really overwhelming. Again, my name is Shannon. My organization is called Stack of Stones, and I really appreciate all that you do. Thanks.